Hello everyone. The topic we are going to start today is about market structure and innovation. The question that we are going to try and answer are related to how a particular kind of market structure is conducive for investment in research and development. Does a firm need to have a market power in as a prerequisite for investment in R&D? Who invests in our research and development? Whether the investment comes from new firms, entrepreneurs, or large established firms? Is the level of the R&D which is now being undertaken in an industry optimal from the point of view of the society as a whole? What about R&D races? What is the effect of duplication of effort and that of the spillovers? To begin with, in our topic we have two terms: market structure and innovation. Innovation, to a large extent, we have already covered. So first, let us have a brief outlook at market structure. Those students who have earlier training in economics will be very comfortable with this topic. Essentially, in market structure, we talk about a competitive environment in which the buyers and the sellers of the product operate. We essentially look at market structure from the point of view of the interaction that happens between the firms. In economics, what we find that there is a spectrum of type of market structure that can be available. On one end, what we have is a perfect competition. and on the another you have monopoly in between these two you will find that different form of market exist for instance there can be a monopolistic competition there can be an oligopoly there can be a duopoly there can be a monopsony as such well. so what determines that what type of market structure we are talking about essentially the most important parameters if you look at to the assumptions that goes behind talking about a specific type of market structure is related to number of buyers and sellers whether the good that is being produced is homogeneous or differentiated whether the market has free entry or exit and what is the degree of knowledge number of buyers and sellers essentially need not mean in terms of the actual absolute number the idea here is whether a single buyer or a seller is able to influence the prices in the market or not with respect to the type of good whether the good we have is homogeneous or differentiated homogeneous goods essentially imply that the good is same for instance agricultural commodities in agricultural commodities one can always question that there can be different grading of the product produce however within a specific grading you may find that that the product is indeed homogeneous irrespective of the farm from which it comes on the other hand we also have differentiated goods in differentiated goods the producers essentially ensure that the good that they bring to the consumer is differentiated or separated from the product which is being offered by the competitor clearly those goods are close substitutes to each other however through specific efforts the good is now differentiated the efforts can be made either by let us say advertising establishing the brand or by also in adding certain features to the product most important examples of the differentiated goods come from fast moving consumer good category for example you have a different varieties of toothpaste that are available some toothpaste may have salt in it another may have some ayurvedic uh, content in it or another may have carbon in it however if you look at in terms of what kind of a want they are satisfying for the consumer is essentially for the oral hygiene looking from that point of view the differentiation is either coming through adding of those features also through extensive advertising which has been undertaken by the producer the another parameter which is of importance in determining the type of market structure is with respect to free entry or exit note here that the producers should be able to enter into the market very easily essentially there should not be any entry barriers if we are talking from a point of view of a competitive market on the other hand also they should be able to exit the market without much trouble now whether the entry and exit is smooth will also influence the kind of market structure that we are going to talk about degree of knowledge essentially highlights what kind of an information exists with the producers and sellers 
our models essentially assume that there is a perfect information and there is no information asymmetry as such. So if you look at these characteristics and try and find out what kind of a market structure we are looking at, you will find that the first category like I said earlier on the one end of the spectrum is a situation where you have perfect competition. What do you mean by perfect competition? That the end, there are no entry barriers from the seller's point of view. The number of the sellers is large and the barrier for the buyers is, are also non-existing and the numbers of buyers is also large. Please note the largeness here once again does not imply in terms of the absolute number but is in terms of the power that an individual seller or buyer may be able to exert in the price determination. Then we look at the other extreme of from that of the perfect competition. That is what you have is a monopoly. In a monopoly what you find first of all is that the number of the seller that we are looking at is effectively one. That is what monopoly means, monopoly with a single seller. Then in terms of the entry barriers, you realize that there can exist entry barriers which can be natural or maybe man-made. However, from the buyer's point of view, when we are looking at the monopoly from a seller's perspective, you still find that the number of the buyers is rather large and they can enter the market without much of a difficulty. So on the one hand, if you see perfect competition whereby the number of the firms and sellers is large and they are competing with each other and other hand, you have a monopoly where a single a seller. Within the spectrum, like I told earlier, we can experience monopsony, oligopoly, oligopsony as well as monopolistic competition. In fact, if you look at monopsony is rather very close to monopoly. The major difference here is with respect to who owns the power. Under the monopoly, it is the seller. Whereas under the monopsony, it is a buyer. So you have a situation where the buyer of the product is only one and there are barriers to entry with respect to entering that particular industry. On the other hand, the number of sellers which are available are rather large and there are no entry barriers from the point of view of the sellers. Next, let us talk about oligopoly. Here, you have a number of sellers which is rather small in number. There are entry barriers. And what you realize is that from the buyer's point of view, there are not much of a concern in the sense that there are large number of buyers and there are no entry barriers also. So with this few sellers in the market now, clearly you are talking also about a product which is homogeneous. That means in terms of the features of the product which are available, they are same. Oligopsony, on the other hand, the number of the sellers remains large and the entry barriers with respect to sellers is, are none whereas with respect to the buyers what you find there are few buyers. In case of oligopoly as I said earlier as in oligopsony the products are homogeneous. But the last one in this category is a monopolistic competition. Here you find that the numbers of sellers are also large, buyers may also be large, no entry barriers also. But then how it is differentiated from the perfect competition? Where is this monopoly coming from? In fact, this is also another oxymoron we have. That is, on one hand, you have a monopoly. On the other hand, you have a competition. So the question arises, where does the monopoly come from? And what is the basis for the competition? The basis for the competition is the large number of buyers and the sellers that are present in the particular industry. The, the source of the monopoly in this kind of market is essentially through the differentiated products. Please remember, I talked to you about the fast-moving consumer goods industry. For example, it could be toothpaste, washing powders, soaps. If you think and you look around, you will find that, in fact, there are various sellers, there are various buyers. Each seller may have various brands also with them. And they are just trying to differentiate their product from that of the competitor. And there are certain people who would be loyal to certain brands. That ensures that individual firm would have a certain amount of a monopoly. On the other hand, given the close substitutes that are available in the market is what will ensure the presence of competition. Having understood that, the question from our side is, how is it that we are going to measure it? Because please remember, the issue that at hand for us for discussion is market structure and innovation. With respect to innovation, what we will see, there are different measures available and one or the another can be employed. And we will talk about them towards the end of this unit. On the other hand, we have a market structure. The very commonly used measures that are available in order to capture the competition 
or like concentration index whereby you have HHI which is Herfindahl-Hirschman index then there is CR4 HHI index is based on the market share of the firms that are available in the industry let us say there are n number of firms which are now available for these h no, n number of the firms each one will be holding a certain amount of a market share if we can square that and sum them up for all in number of firms which are available in the market is what we will be able to calculate an index that will be representing the level of competition in this particular industry if you use the term like 75 or something then this can the number can go up to 10000 and clearly higher the number it will effectively mean that lower would be the competition lower number would essentially imply that there is more competition in the market the another very properly used measure for measuring competition is cr4 or its allied numbers like maybe cr2 or cr10 whereby now you are looking at a concentration level or the ratios amongst the large firms which are there in the industry say for example you are looking at an automobile industry you pick up the four or two largest industry firms in that particular industry let me make it very clear that we will be using the common terminology of firm and industry as is used in economic theory for in this particular course also whereby the firms would be like they might be producing a certain kind of a product could be an automobile sector and then when you are bringing together the firm which are producing the similar product is what we will be talking about the automobile industry to give you an example in an automobile industry we will be talking about companies like the Maruti, Hyundai, Honda etc and when you are putting them together is what we are talking from the industry point of view so the competition in that sense will be determined at a level of an industry in the sense that now suppose you pick up four major firms in that particular industry the top firms and you find out what kind of a market share are these firms holding suppose these firms are holding around almost 85 percent of the market share then clearly it's a concentrated industry because largest market share is now being held by only four companies on the other hand if you find that that the ratio of or the share of the largest firm is rather low you will be having a competitive market the another important measure which is used to capture competition is related to learner index learner index is essentially talks about how much a particular seller is able to deviate from the marginal cost and that essentially means it's his or her capacity to actually charge over the cost so if you look at the term this is effect coming to price minus marginal cost over the price effect giving you the degree of the monopoly power in force please note how these two measures are different from the uh, hhi and cr4 learner index when we are talking about we will be talking from a point of view of an individual firm or a, let us say a company and we will be measuring this so called a degree of monopoly power in force whereas if you look at concentration index scr4 and in their different variants they would be used and will be interpreted at an industry level okay so you will be able to find out whether a particular industry is competitive or not and here if the number is large in terms of the, uh, uh, the the learner index it will actually tell whether a single seller in a market has a higher degree of monopoly power or not 